Well, Robert L. Dean. Uh, I think that we have made it to the time in the program where we done had the A and B selection. We done <laughs> taken up the offering oh, and, and, and we have did the prayer service and we have <laughs> did c communion and now it's to the whole matter. I was just going to say, the, the, it's the, like a doggone the, church service. Yeah, the, the word is coming forward. I, I, I'm finna say the, it. the word of music is say, coming forward. I'm finna say, are we in a church service or are we on a radio Well, well I, I just needed you to get a little cheap because you churchy. Yeah, I, okay, no, uh, I can't uh, take it. I'm the Kojic boy. Oh, yeah, no, you I, churchy. I'm is what I'm is. Hard bottom running to, yes. for Jesus' shoes. Hallelujah. Yes. With the tambourine in here. It ain't tired yet. Man, we got an <laughs> interview that's so hot, it's hotter than fish grease. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Who do we yeah. got with us today, Robert Earl? Well, where do you begin with this young man? At the man, beginning. With this young man. This young man <laughs> hails from Ohio, and um, God has brought him to the West Coast, the best coast. All right. Hallelujah. And um, you guys, you are in for a treat. This gentleman is a producer's producer. And he can sing like nobody's tomorrow. None other than the legendary Aaron Lindsay. Welcome, my brother. Welcome. Thank you, guys. Thank you for letting me be with y'all this morning in the uh, radio church after y'all done had all the <laughs> offerings. And... See, 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 look, look at he, he right on. He, he, we're going to have to take up, a, up an offering, too. You know what? <laughs> he, he's, a, he's a church boy. From the Apostolic Church, Pentecostal, like ah. us. Wait, 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 wait. Are you, are you from the Pow? What, what, what part of the Pentecostal uh, are you I part was, of? I was part of some uh, a smaller organization that had a bigger name. It was, and not only bigger, like more well known. It means longer. Longer. <laughs> I'm, from the, I'm from the original glorious Apostolic Church of God in Christ of the Apostolic Faith. Is Woo! that crazy? That's a name. whole lot of words. Is that a That's real a name? Lot of name? That's a real name. O G A C. Man, 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 that, that let y'all was anointed. They was anointed. Yeah, y'all was anointed. Oh, yes. It, while y'all was talking, trying to say your name, y'all just started speaking in tongues. Right. I felt that. I was speaking in tongues. You, you, you dropped well, That's why I was ready to take up that second offering because the church, you realize as a preacher, that's, that's, that's coming. That's, that's <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, well, brother, we, we actually um, <laughs> have been looking forward to this interview yes. because of, uh, of your, your history mm -hmm. and, and your dossier of music and, and your impact on the Christian uh, music market. So I just want to start off by saying thank you for giving us this opportunity and just kind of want to start at the beginning. When did you know that you had the oil on your life? Well, to be honest with you, I, I, um, I, it goes back to my church. It goes back to the upbringing. It goes back to sitting on the second row of my church every day of the week because my mom was a minister, my dad was a minister of music. So the church I grew up in, my dad was the choir director. He was the pianist uh, and he led, you know, he, he taught the choir, all their parts and everything. So I grew up in it, man. And, and you know, when you're immersed in that environment and you start to see it happening and, and our church was in this little town in Ohio. And forgive me, I got a dog in the background. Uh, that's that's the that's the confines of uh virtual uh, interviews. Right. You might just be subject to anything. I just hope right. nobody walked by with no clothes on. Uh, <laughs> we, we've seen them on Instagram. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you see Shiloh, yeah. So, uh, hold on one second. Y'all come get this dog. This come is live action, y'all. This is live, y'all. Lord Jesus, we bind the dog in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Go and bow to I'm the children. Producer. I know better. She might come get this toy. She tearing the interview up. <laughs> anyway. This is all good. She giving them a praise. She heard me talking about church and went in. She right. And she was on key, too. On the high sounding instrument. Yeah. Anyway. Wait, wait a minute. But, she she that one person that when you're doing a recording, wanna try to get on the recording but wasn't scheduled. <laughs> yeah, they got their own tambourine. I'm like, look, we got a percussionist. Right. So we we don't need your tambourine in the recording. In fact, when I do a live recording, I do a tambourine offering at the beginning. I'm like, Any, anybody that got a tambourine, bring it on down to the front. We'll give it back to you after this over. <laughs> offer it up to the Lord right now. Right. Amen. Amen. But yeah, I learned that church, and that's how that's how it got started for me. Well, I guarantee you started in drums, because most Absolutely. everybody we didn't we didn't interview that's a producer was a drummer first. Absolutely, and that's the very truth. I mean, I, I drum I drummed on the floor. I played drums on the floor in my in my house when I was a child until I was allowed to get on them skins. I couldn't even touch the the pedal 
and I was using the floor time as a kick drum. Oh, wow. That's how I started. Yeah. Wow. So tell me, uh, you, you said you grew up in a very small town. What's the name of the small town you grew up in? The city I grew up in is called Elyria, Ohio. It's outside of Cleveland. It sounds more like a disease than a city, but that's a real city. Elyria. See, Pray see. for me, Doc. I got that Elyria. I got that Elyria. Right. So everybody knew everybody. <laughs> they're, like, they're like, where are you from? Willacoochee, Georgia. Right. Uh, Elyria. <laughs> right. So, it sounds like delirium, but actually right. it's Elyria. It's right off the lake, Lake Erie, a very small town, but outside of Cleveland. And it's positioned almost equally between, uh, well, just spaced out between Cleveland and Detroit. So the benefit of that for us was we had the benefit of both Metroplexes. Yes. And when and when bands like Mississippi Mass or the Williams Brothers or the Canton Spirituals or the Commission Group or the Winans would, mm-hmm. be, would, would do concerts in Cleveland, they would stop at our church on mm-hmm. the way back to Detroit. So our church was this tiny church that had these humongous artists always falling through. You know why? Because of the name of the music people. Because you know, anytime you're a hot church, big or small, if you are a musical church, people will come through. That's right. And they will come through and we would pack that place out and we would bless them on the way. And it was a nice way for them to make a middle offering. Right. You know, on the way home. And sell them CDs because people don't know it. But the smaller venues sell more than the bigger churches. You're absolutely right. And we would just, we would bless them. We would bless them financially. We would buy all their product and then we would feed them. You know, our church, we, we were in the north, but all them folks migrated from the south Country because folks. that's where all the uh, auto factories were. Right. Mm-hmm. So they would fry chicken and you can smell that chicken cooking while the concert going on, Doc. Right. Greens right. and macaroni and chicken. Right. And oh, spaghetti. Okay. So we'll have our and first, we'll have our first teachable moment. For all the artists that are out there that are coming up that want to get to the big cities, mm-hmm. don't despise the small cities because those are your super fan cities that will buy your product Come and that will take care of you better. And and, and so don't forget those small yes, cities because those are the ones that are going to support you. That's a preach word. That's right. That's a good word. And I would, I would, I would double down on that. Yeah, that's the truth. So let me ask you. Uh, you grew up in Elyria. I'm saying it right? Elyria. 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 Yeah. How did you uh, transpose your life into coming to the big city? Man, I'm going to tell you, I, in, my, in my yearbook, I wrote that at some point I wanted to live in Los Angeles and I wanted to be a producer. Wow. And I, I, wanted to, I had all these things that I had re- written down. And it's a written record of my faith. It mm-hmm. really is. Yes. I think a lot of people um, don't, especially in our culture, don't take the time to document or journal your thoughts. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't formally journaling. If I look back, I should have done more of it. But it was just written down. And, and so I moved from Elyria to to Texas first. I spent years in, in Austin and Houston, Texas mm-hmm. with uh, my best friend. Uh, Israel and I were, were building a ministry called Newbury. And so we I transitioned with him first to Texas. And we headquartered out of Houston, mm-hmm. and then I moved from Houston to Los Angeles. So it was, it's been a journey, but I got here, Doc. I finally made it. Never would have well, made it. Well, <laughs> well, since you mentioned Israel, right? He's. Uh, I'm gonna just ask this now. Were you here when we brought Israel to the San Diego County Fair? Were you with him then? San Diego County Fair. I don't remember. I might have been. I don't okay. know. How, what year was that? How long? Oh ago man, that? that 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 had to be at least what eight years ago. Eight, nine years I ago. very well would have been producing by that point. I don't okay. know if I was still traveling. Well, okay. well the good it's, thing about him is some little history. He was born in Oceanside, which is part of San Diego County. Absolutely. I actually met, uh, I went to the place where, I went to the exact spot where his mother got ministered to about not getting rid of the baby, which was him at the time. Yeah. So he showed me where, where the lady crossed the street and told that lady, that baby that you can is a blessing. Don't get rid of it. Amen. Well, I'm, I'm going to ask you a straight question about Israel and you. Okay. Uh, here go. Sunday Kind of Love. Where Ooh. in the Habibi Jeebies did Where'd you that get that from? song? We never that, heard, I never heard that of it. That song is just like, that's my groove, bro. Man, Sunday Kind of Love was something we wrote for, for a film called I'm in Love with a Church Girl. Yeah. But we knew we wanted to do a gospel song, but we wanted to do a love song. Mm-hmm. And so there's there's a there's another classic song called Sunday Kind of Love. Mm-hmm. So the title had already been floating around in our minds, mm-hmm. 
but but I just said, hey man, we need to make it sound like an old school R and B. So I put that old school right groove because that's right where you get people when they when you can get them bobbing. Yeah, yeah. And then you got that very familiar chord. It's it's a classic gospel change. And then we just got in the room and started making as many correlations about love and church and trying to, I tried to basically massage it into my relationship with my wife and right. he did the same. And that's what we came out with. Yeah. Well, man, that, we, we played it right before we get, we came on uh, today and everybody's like, Oh yeah, there you go. Right, right there. You know, it, it automatically got people going. And I love that song. Man. Yeah. And that's one of the things I, I love about your versatility is that you just don't have one lane. Um, uh, we could hear a Sunday kind of love, then we go straight to church with you. Yeah, and I think that's a function of the environment I grew up in. Uh, going back to Illyria, it was a small town, but it was very multi ethnic, mm -hmm. very multicultural. Um, it was called the International City, mm -hmm. and uh, because people migrated from all over to work at these auto factories, right? Like mm -hmm. Ford, GM, Chrysler, all in one city, so you had thousands and thousands of people that just would migrate. So I was exposed to so many different things. I remember at my cousin's house hearing the song We Are the Champions mm -hmm. in his basement on the record by by Queen. And yeah. when I heard Freddie Mercury's voice, I literally started crying tears. But I was too young to understand what it was I was hearing. Um, my dad, before one of the first concerts I went to was a jazz fusion concert with Jeff Lorber. Jeff mm -hmm. Lorber Fusion. So I heard that. And then, my, then, as I told you, those bands will come through. And I was exposed to so many things. And my um, the area I was in had a lot of Hispanic population or Latin X population, right. so that Hispanic music or that that salsa music and uh, the Montunos that piano players play the it just got in my spirit. Wow! So when when it came time for me to do what I did for God, I would not I wasn't able to leave that out. There. So right. when you listen to the music that like me and Israel have done or me and India Ari have done or me and Kenny Lattimore have done. Mm -hmm. You hear influences from so many different things, but I just never felt, my dad encouraged me, don't leave anything out of your expression to the Lord. Because when you put, when you, when you submit it to him, mm -hmm. he puts his super on your natural, he anoints it, and it touches more people than it could if you were monolithic in a sense, like where you only came from one lane. So, right. so let me ask you this question. In the Ari, Yes. Why, why is it that even though she was singing in, quote, unquote, a secular environment, why did everybody have a spiritual experience every time they heard her sing? Because India Ari, and I know her very personally, very, very personally. Um, her mother was a praise and worship leader, was one of the first praise and worship leaders for New Birth Missionary Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. And so India was raised in a household that honored the Lord. Mm -hmm. And she's been on a journey in her faith since she was 18, I guess, where she started walking through the um, just the world of spirituality. And she's been, you know, very studied in a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I don't share the same belief system in certain areas. Right. But the one thing she does respect is faith. Mm -hmm. And she certainly has a, a part of her that's still deeply rooted in her Christian upbringing. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I remember a scripture saying that uh, you can make your bed in hell and and you can't get and he's, he'll be with you. That's what David said. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying she did that. Right. I'm just saying no matter how she expresses or like finds her way through it, God is with her still. Mm -hmm. And if you're a believer and you start hearing her saying, in fact, when we were on tour for the Christmas record, one of my friends is a pastor in Baltimore. I invited him and his wife to the to the concert. And he said, Aaron Lindsay, I felt the glory of God on some of that stuff so powerful. Mm -hmm. And he said, I'm still wrapping, wrapping my mind around what happened because if you raise in traditional church, you believe the anointing can only flow through gospel artists. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times we don't know what their backstory is Come or on. their lifestyle is. Come on. And so I, I, I love India. That's my sister. In fact, she's on this Christmas album. I know y'all going to get to it, so I'm going to jump past right. you. Go ahead, y'all. And you know, God can use anybody. We, we tend to get so caught up in what we think and what we've been taught, which is not always scriptural or biblical. It was yes. just our way of trying to stay away from the world. Yeah. God uses who we want to. And from that young lady having a mom who she saw worship and, and praise God, it's in her no matter what phase she's going through, she's going to yeah. be where God wanted her to be. I guarantee you. 
And, and when you, you spend when mm-hmm. you spend time around her, you see the fruit of her life. And the mm-hmm. Bible says the tree's known by the fruit it bears, mm-hmm. not just the things it says. Right. Because people can say a whole lot of things and not be ha- not have no fruit. And when I'm with her, man, I can see this dedication mm-hmm. to uh, purity. She's one of the most responsible artists I've ever worked with. Wow. She's one of the most intentional songwriters I've ever worked mm-hmm. with. And I got nothing but respect <laughs> for her. And yeah. so you are the living example of what when we tell people that we have to get out of the four walls of the church to be able to minister to the masses. Only a person of your caliber at this point could be in a position to minister to so many of these musicians that might, you know, have that background but need that person to remind them of where their help come from. And that's what I love about you, that you take the kingdom with you everywhere you go. And and, it, and it's literally reflected in the music that is produced. Man, and I'm honored, I, I honor the Lord with everything I do. Someone asked me one time, they said, how can you do both secular and sacred? I said, well, when it comes out of my heart, it's all sacred. Mm-hmm. Right. The orientation of the thing is, the Bible says it's not what goes in a man that defiles him is what, come, is Come what comes out. Right? Come so it's like, if your music is coming out of you from a pure place, mm-hmm. then where it ends up is not your responsibility. That's mm-hmm. on God. But as long as it comes out of me purely, it may land in the mainstream or it may land in the church. Right. My job is to put into the earth and birth what it is the Lord has called me to birth. Mm-hmm. And I think that's part of my, and I don't mean denominationally, I mean calling wise. That's part of the apostolic nature of my gift. Right. I'm very, I'm very clear about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then one of the reasons I stopped coloring my beard so much is because this says something to to these young producers when I walk in the room. They go, oh, "Okay, we got to listen to OG because he does know a little something." Mm-hmm. And I mean, of course, I still swag myself up, but then I'm able to minister to them <laughs> right. as a marketplace pastor, right. yeah, not just a church guy. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Now, million dollar question. How did the name New Breed come up? New Breed was a name that Israel had already uh, had a part of his ministry. It was called New Breed Ministries. But um, there wasn't a group. It was just, it was something that he just felt that God called him to do. But it it wasn't really known. It wasn't broadcast uh, out there. And when he started his group, they said, well, when we started the group, because there was no group. Right. <laughs> Honestly, Integrity came to, to him and said, hey, we'd like to do a worship live worship record. And he came to me and said, hey, let's do a live worship record. What do you think? And I say, yeah. And we we both went and found all of our friends of all cultures, of mm-hmm. all ethnicities. I mean, we had guys on stage with red and long hair that looked like, you know, looked like a Viking. You know, he looked like mm-hmm. he's from Norway or something. And we had people who looked like they were straight out of the local black church on stage together worshiping. And that hadn't really been done at the scale that we did it. And then basically he and I traveled because even after we did the record, there was no group. We just had some friends that we had worked with. Mm -hmm. So I was really new breed. I mean, what it means is, you know, the, the, the next phase of what we believe God would do at the time. And here's the thing we knew that it had to be bigger than us because everything new even has to be recreated again. Mm -hmm. And um, I want to encourage anybody that's listening that loved what me and Israel did to trust the Lord with your sound and not just replicate what you hear other people doing. Mm -hmm. What we did was we took a risk and that risk had some costs to it. There were years and years we went with no number ones or we had one number one, but we were impacting the church really big. Mm-hmm. But we couldn't get radio to spin it because, you know, it was too white for black radio and it was too black for white radio. But those same DJs would go to church and love the songs. Mm-hmm. Right. And I don't even think they knew who sang it. Wow. They would hear these songs like New Season and Who Is Like the Lord mm-hmm. and Trading My Sorrows. And they would go research it and Daryl Evans would come up because he wrote Trading My Sorrows. But they didn't realize it was a we had remade it into a black song. And then finally, when the word got out. I think we were still more more potent in the local church than we were in the industry. Mm-hmm. But God is faithful, and we just stayed on it. I think people will be um, surprised to know that Israel worked with Eddie James in his in his earlier years. So you can hear the flavor of both of them and the influence of Eddie James as well. I think absolutely. I think it just moved up and boiled to be you know what it became. 
Yeah, and Israel was uh, on a journey as well. Like I always, I feel like God, as a producer, you have to be very um, intuitive when you work with your artists to know where they are and where, what seasons they're in. Mm. And it seems like God always brings me into someone's life when they're on that journey. Um, Kenny Lattimore, he was on a journey. You know, he'd been a minister and a pastor and all this stuff. Like Kenny's um, ministry pedigree is huge. Oh yeah. But he was on he's on this path, and God sent me into his life musically. We did a Christmas album together. We did two R and B albums together. We're getting ready to write some other things together. Same with India. Same with Israel. And Israel was on a journey when we met. Mm -hmm. He was on this identifying who am I, and he had done this CCM record called Whisper It Loud. Mm -hmm. And he had a choice. Do I just stay CCM right. or do I explore what's in my heart? And then when God connected us and we started realizing what was in his heart was the same thing that was bubbling over in my heart. Because, again, where I was from, my dad exposed me to so much. Mm -hmm. I mean, Bill Gaither Trio, oh, Sandy yes. Patty, Larnell Harris. I knew all that music. You yes. know? I knew Russ Taff. I knew all those things as wow. well as the gospel stuff. And um, I had this Hawkins, Crouch, Gaither influenced approach to my music. Richard Smallwood is one of the biggest influences in my life. Wow. I'll never forget the first time I heard Center of My Joy was live yeah. at our church. And I could not believe my ears. Again, I had this visceral reaction as like a 10 year old just crying. Mm -hmm. But that was you know? Bill Gaither's song. Yeah. Center of my joy. Yeah. Yep. One, yep. one, one thing that's really funny just hearing you talk, um, we also produced jazz at the Creek here in San Diego. And uh, when we had Kenny Lattimore here a few years ago, uh, one of the nicest guys uh, that you could ever meet in the industry. Um, and we and it was just like it was kind of funny because we had Shante Moore the first year, uh, the yeah. year before, and then we had Kenny Lattimore, and and both of them did extremely well. Uh, but his heart was really really big. The way he he literally I felt serviced the crowd uh, of people that came to see him and took the time. So um, and I see the influence that you had in his music. I just want to ask this question: If I said to you. Uh, uh, Lindsay, party of five. Lindsay, party of five. Who's the party of five? Oh, it's Aaron, Adrian, Blake, Kennedy, and little Aaron. It's okay. my family. That's see, who I'm taking. See, I had to ask that question because you got party of five right behind so your head. Do. And so yeah. I figured that, let me ask about party of five. So that five is a thread for me. Five Lions Publishing is my publishing company. We yeah. are the five Lions. So, yeah, that's the party of five. And if you're talking musically, who the party five is, yeah. it's probably going to be me. And this is a dream. Me, Quincy Jones, Andre Crouch, Walter Hawkins, Jesus, and my God. Aretha Franklin. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, my God. Well, well, I want you to hold that because I want to get back to the family environment because how is it, you um, party of five, you're talking about your family. How is it that you keep your family so together in the midst of travel and producing and everything mm -hmm. else? Uh, let's talk about the queen, uh, uh, and and let's give her a little credit a as we go forward. Oh, man, I, I, I tell everybody all the time, you don't know Aaron Lindsay without Adrian Lindsay, who is mm -hmm. my wife of 22 years. Mm -hmm. um, in 2004, when I made a, a very tough decision to come off the road with Newbreed and become a producer and not just a traveling musician anymore with the band that we had begun, uh, it was a tough decision. It was five. We had spent five years covering the earth with the sound of heaven. That was our goal on almost every continent. And I made a decision to come home because one of our members uh, of the group was also he would come to our church and he came out on a date and he said, Hey man, I didn't realize little Aaron started walking. And I was like, little Aaron started walking. What do you mean? So I missed my son's first steps. Wow. Wow. So that, that hurt me. So in, in 2005, actually it was around five middle of 2005, late 2005. I said, you know, what it is after this Africa record, I got to come home, bro. I got children who don't know their father. Mm -hmm. You know, I was on the road and my address was at every local Hilton hotel because you know, right. I was so busy. Right. And I had a family that I recognized 
Um, I was more, I, I was going to be held accountable to the Lord about what I did with my family, mm -hmm. not what I did with my group. That's right. Mm -hmm. And at some point you got to look back and say, my legacy cannot just be the people I touch along the way. My legacy is going to be the people that I raised in my home and yes. my wife for years, yes. years covered me in that area and basically did what every traveling businessman, musician or whatever wants. Someone that will love their children, raise their children, protect their children and teach their children who their father is yes. and not build resentment for him not being there. Right. And man, Adrian, I don't even know how to begin to brag on my wife. She's just amazing. Amen. amen. And you know, that's important because growing up in a Pentecostal church, like I said, with bishops and, and superintendents, they love the Lord so, but they don't know how to bridge the balance because they really want to see souls saved, but they forget that there's souls at the house and that's where ministry begins Woo! at first. And then when they go to look for uh, succession and they look to their children, their children want no parts of it. Right. Mm -hmm. And you wonder why these powerful people have children who don't want anything to do with it. And there may be some anxiety or frustration with the fact that, you know, we didn't get a chance to experience you. So right. I don't know if I want to be you because yeah. I don't know who you are. Right. And, and there or there's two different versions of you, mm -hmm. one on the stage and one at home. And, right. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. The reason why I ask that is because so many times, you know, we get so caught up in the, the person that we see. Um, on stage or the producer that we never ever re realize that there's more to that producer than just what we see and there's a testimony and I love it when um, just like right now you're on the interview dog is chirping in the background uh, you you you're just that type of family dude that's the type of ministry that is so real you didn't try to just get up there and be like oh well there's a little sick. you was like no the dog is barking <laughs> and how you keep it real, to me, is what is evident in the music that you produce because it's just real and it's relatable. Thank you. Thank you. I've, I was told this before I even started producing. What comes from the heart reaches the heart. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And that's the bottom line. It has to really come from your heart. And I'm just, my personality, I'm just a really, I try to be a nice person, you know, to everybody I meet or come into contact with, no matter if you have platform, if you don't have platform, mm -hmm. I try to bring my heart to the table all the time. And, I, and I, my, my whole career has been built off the branch of my family, mm -hmm. literally. They give me inspiration. My wife gives me inspiration. I, I wrote Steady Love with India Ari, and I was writing it about myself right. and my love for my wife. Right. I wasn't, you know, it wasn't some guy I had to pull out of some right. magical book to get a subject about. Right. It's like, no, nah, man, I'm at home doing the work. I'm trying. Mm -hmm. I'm flawed. We make mistakes as men. I'm not attentive mm -hmm. enough. Right. Uh, I may not listen to her enough, but I'm in the game. Mm -hmm. I'm trying. And I told my wife something yesterday. And I said, babe, I, I used to look in the mirror and resent all this gray and these crow's feet and this aging and I lost my hair. And I said, I, I, I came to a point the other day where I looked in the mirror and I said, yeah, <laughs> you survived. You survived, yes. You made it. Through many dangers, toils, and stairs, I've I have already, already come. come. Yes, it was sir. grace that brought me. Come on. Yes. And grace will lead me on. And I look in the mirror and I see the grace and the goodness Come on. of God. It's it's like, how did I survive? Statistically, from the town I'm from that yes. y'all never heard of, yes. from the culture I'm from that you are very well acquainted with, to the experiences that musicians have, to the life on the road, to church hurt trauma, to all the things you can name, I'm still here. Still standing. My wife is still here. My children are sane and safe. God is still faithful in my life. And it is no, it has nothing to do with me. I'm grateful, Doc. I'm really grateful. I've noticed that you, you are a servant. You, you started in your church serving. You, you moved to Houston serving. Now let's talk about this wonderful Fellowship Monrovia Church. Oh, my gosh. Yes, sir. Yeah, man. So I stumbled on Fellowship Monrovia. Did you know that? I, I, I didn't, but, but we have a, a mutual 
person that's in the midst of it all. Wait, wait yes. hold, hold on, Pastor hold on. Tanya. Pastor yes, Tanya. sir, my hold, cousin, hold, hold, hold my on, blood hold, cousin. Hallelujah. Hold, hold on, you went from Illyria, 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 to Ohio, uh, and now you at a Monrovia. I'm, I live in now. I, 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 let's be clear. I live in Calabasas. So I, oh, I, Lord uh -oh. Jesus, uh -oh. Calabasas. He, he, he with the, the Kardashians. Hallelujah. I aim for the valley. I yeah. aim for the valley. Tell, tell, tell uh, uh, the Kardashians. We say, hey. No, he need to, <laughs> no, he need to go lay hands. <laughs> but don't get caught oh, up. God. Don't right. get caught up with the Kardashians. Right. <laughs> well, you know that's crazy because you know I, Teddy Campbell, drummer. Yes. Um, the husband of Tina Campbell. Right. When I when I was moving here, I had like Pasadena on the brain. I had uh, you know Hollywood on the brain. Right. I had Sherman Oak, all that stuff. And Teddy Campbell said, "Doc, you from Texas, and you think you can just do what you did in Texas in L.A. It's gonna cost you twice, three times the money unless you move to the Valley." Right. So part of it wasn't just trying to be next to the Kardashians, because trust me, I'm not that close to the Kardashians. They, <laughs> their, their money, they have a money printing machine in their house. They just, right. Hey, we need a couple million print. Right, right, uh, right. There's <laughs> levels to this thing. Right. Uh, but as I was in, I was, I was working with an artist out of the South. Y'all may know him, Jason Thigpen. Yeah. Yes, that's that's David Curry's nephew from Mississippi, Mass. Man, let me tell you, oh my gosh, I, we may not have time for all these stories, but I remember David Curry coming to my church when I was about nine years old with not the Mississippi Mass, with the D.R. Curry Memorial Choir. Yes, sir. Which was the orientation of the Mississippi Mass. They yes, all sir. were birthed out of that. Yes, sir. But that, that church, um, Kojic Church, amen, yes. they actually drove up to, they would, they would come up on their bus. On their on their own church bus, like a tour bus, like a sit up bus. Back in them choir. days? Oh yes, doc. They was moving. DR Curry. And um I met David then and we never forgotten. He he still remember because my like uh like I told you, we would treat people so kind. Right. Mm -hmm. And we had this little church that wasn't, I don't know, a tiny church, 150 people, maybe. Wow. And we would pack that thing out and have church. And that was the one thing, it was so authentic. So I met David Curry back then. Didn't know his sister the um, was the lead singer mm -hmm. of Put Your Trust in Jesus, I think. Yes, Put Your Trust and in then, Jesus. And then her son, her son's Donovan and Dathan, yep. became friends of mine. They asked me to work on a record. So I'm working with Dathan in California. He grew up in the same town as Albert Tate. Albert yep. Tate comes by the studio with his little ball cap on and his hoodie and sweats. And mm -hmm. He comes in talking about a song that he's been listening to on his sabbatical called uh, he said, I think it's called A Great Work. God is doing a great work in me. And that song has been blessing my life. And I'm just sitting there and I didn't want to tell him I wrote it because I wanted to hear what he had to say about it. Right. Mm -hmm. So his description of the song was so accurate. I was like, this dude, ain't, he's a, are you a producer? You a musician? Because he was literally painting everything that uh, came out of my heart when I wrote that song for Brian Courtney Wilson. Oh my God. Like, this, this dude's got it right here, you know? And then they said he wrote the song. He and I became friends. He started sharing with me his vision. I went and visited the church. While I'm sitting in Fellowship Monrovia, I'm wrestling with the call on my life to plant a church. And uh, I had been co-pastoring here in the Valley at a small church called Living Praise with mm -hmm. Dr. Fred L. Hodge. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing that since 2016, 2017. So I took a period of time, said, Doc, I'm supposed to plant. I'm going to pull away from ministry because I don't want to divide your church and I love you. Right. So let me do this honorably. Let me put a year in between me and what I'm supposed to be doing. That was 2018. Next thing you know, me, Albert Tate, he starts telling me about his church. I visit his church and I see this expression that looks like what my music sounds like. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That church looked like what my songs sound like. Mm -hmm. Everybody. Right. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, my God. I've never seen this like this led by a black man. Never. Because mm -mm. black folks will go to white churches and it will look multicultural, but it's still one culture. Come on. We just have to assimilate to that culture. Yes, sir. But I hadn't seen white people rally around a black leader other than like Dr. Tony Evans or maybe Fred Price would have some. Even Dr. Charles Blake has a lot of white people that love him, but right. not in mass like that. I don't see him rolling in with their kids nope. and just chilling at the church all the time. Mm-hmm. So I met Albert, I came to the church and me and my wife sat on the second row and said, babe, I really believe there's something that we're supposed to do with this man. And so we just sat on it. Next thing you know, he and I started talking. He said, help me with my music if you, if you, you, know, if you want to. And uh, I prayed about it and the Lord said, yes, do it. 
and I've been on staff for two years. I'm coming up on my two year anniversary. And it's not that I don't believe we're gonna plant, but God has given me context and a safe place to cultivate because of the church that I'm in. Yeah. Yes, okay. and my okay. cousin's there serving and um, how she got there was extraordinary because Pastor Tate came out of a big church and then he was Lake sent. Lake Avenue. He, yeah. he was sent to go yeah. and this church start blowing up like crazy because Tanya would talk about him and talk about him. And I'd be like, who is this fella that could take from that church, establish his own and get the, the masses as quickly as he did? Says a lot about him. Nine years of ministry and... I, I'm just, I'm really still amazed at, uh, I, I think you can tell what a church is about when you see the the the, uh, the makeup of its staff. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that's where a church is making its investment. And yes, I don't sir. just mean the ones that are on stage. I'm talking about those that have voice, mm -hmm. that are leading, mm -hmm. that are making decisions. Uh, the only higher place is the board. But uh, when you look at the staff, man, it's so diverse. Uh, you go, wow, okay, this is intentional. This is real. I've been at churches where they are diverse, but their diversity starts and ends in the music department. Right, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. You can be on stage and you can sing, but you can't make a decision. Yeah. Come on. We'll take your opinion, but we won't take your vote. Yeah. Because uh, we want your bodies, but we don't want the burden. Mm -hmm. Right. That's true. And we don't we don't want to necessarily put our money where our mouth is while we may talk and speak diversity. We're really a little eh, we're not comfortable in dealing with people of color in a um, on Leadership. an executive level. Mm -hmm. We prefer to keep you where we can manage you. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's intentional. I think it's part of not the ignorance of culture that has kept us apart for so long. Right. But I love how fellowship has been deliberate about how it is built. And Tanya is a joy to work with. We work together every day. I mean, we talk almost every single day. And she is a pastor for real. Yes. I love her. She's so, for real. So and can sing her face off. Oh, my God. So so let me say this. No, normally, I try my best not to have a beef with anybody that we have on the show. And when no, we don't. An interview. No, we don't. But I got another beef. Uh, are you a Clipper fan, man? No, no. I'm a oh, Laker. Oh, no, Laker all day. Okay, okay. Right. <laughs> about LeBron, I was going to say, this is right. a legit beef. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so I just want to say, um, my beef is the song, A Great Work. Oh, my uh, God. Now, now the, you know how they say, that Negro, see, I had to, you, you might almost maybe go all the way back. That song right there, when I was at one of my lowest points in my life, Mm. That song right there kept me going. And wow. I, when I tell you, brother, that that song has so much oil on it, that wow. song right there just, just reinvigorated. Um, when you do so much and, and you don't feel like you, if the impact is where you want it mm -hmm. to be, mm -hmm. when that song came out, it rejuvenated me. It, 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 it gave me new life mm -hmm. and some new energy. So my beef with you is, man, that song right now, I'm getting emotional because that song messed me up. Every time I hear it, it's one of the best ever. It, it messes me up because it really, real. really gives us at that point of encouragement. And when we heard um, at the Stellars, at the, um, uh, I think it was either ASCAP or Motown Breakfast, Brian Courtney Wilson talk about, you know, his journey and how he would come to the Stellars and nobody knew his name. Yep. And now. He's now speaking in front of at major breakfasts and things of that nature. Um, it, it blesses me to know that there is men of God that are giving not just music, but giving ministry. And the ministry goes before them and stays in the atmosphere even far after they produce it. So my beef with you, brother, is please keep on doing music like that because that, that, that music gives us life. I will. Thank you. Thank you so much. That that whole album, because doing this mm. doing this Corona, I finally put it on and put it in. Wow, man, that that CD, it, and I don't understand why it's not nominated for a Grammy. Let, let me let me forget all this TV stuff and this. this. I'm with you. I'm 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 really learning now as I work on my solo project to focus on God and ministry. Because if you get caught up yeah. on these accolades from these industry people. 
Because that album is album of the year, hands down, from top to bottom. That album is incredible. Well, you know, there's a lot of politics that goes into that Grammy process. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, there's a lot of block voting. So if, you're, mm -hmm. if you don't have a big label that you're on, oh. and you don't have a lot of employees that are also signed up with Naris. Right. And I hate that I hate that this is true because I'm also very involved in the Grammys. Yes. But it is just votes are votes. Mm -hmm. And that's why we as even an African American culture or a primarily democratic culture, we had to get out and register people to vote. We do if it. you ain't registered, we're gonna do it this year. Vote. We're gonna do it right? this year. Yeah, so if, the same thing with the Grammys. Yes. If you don't, if we don't get people in there that know this business, yes. know this music, mm -hmm. they can't vote, and so we miss opportunities. But like, um, I think also the first song Brian and I wrote together, uh, what we worked on was called "So Proud." That was way back mm -hmm. when, back in the day. And then when I got hired at Motown Gospel to be the vice president of A and R, it gave me the right to go sign artists. Mm -hmm. And before I got the job. Me and my wife took Brian and Stacy Wilson to dinner in Houston because mm -hmm. we lived in Houston. I said, "Yo, B, I wanna, I, I wanna sign you to Motown. I just wanna make sure you wanna be there, you know, because I just really see something. Because I loved his work over there at Matthew Knowles. He had that song, um, "We Watch and oh, Wait." Yes. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Oh, yeah. I was like, "Who is this guy?" Oh. And y'all were just playing them just now. He, you see the expanse of his voice his make voice. you holler. One of the best voices I ever heard in my life. And we the first song we were blessed to do together that really hit it was um, uh, Worth Fighting For. Mm -hmm. There yeah. is so much more. Another Grammy. Then, that should be man. a Grammy. That should have been a Grammy. Yeah. I'm sorry. We got nominated, but you know, mm -mm. You know how that goes. Mm -mm. Uh, well, thank y'all for the love. I really it's appreciate it. It's the truth. It. Let me tell you this. Um, uh, our team, Evangel and Walter Cole, um, when they were at the Stellars, um, uh, they got to meet him, and then uh, he invited them back to the hotel room to do a full-on interview uh, oh, with wow, him for cool. the station. And since that day, him and 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 Walter Cole and Evangel almost stay in contact. You know, I think monthly uh, they have an interview wow. coming up with him. He is one of the nicest guys, and they've come to me and said, "Okay, we need to get him here in concert." You know, I get orders from my team, and they were like saying, "This is who we need, and this is who we want to do." Um, I just want to just say to you that um, we're here for you and your artists. If there's ever a time we are a BDS reporting station that you need to interview or to feature or even uh, to get, get an artist on one of the programs that we produce, uh, feel free to call us. You are our brother for life. You can't get rid of us now. You wow, know? I love it. Thank you, man. I'm yeah. so happy to be part of the family. Yeah. Amen. And let's talk about your writer's retreat. Yes, I know about the writers' retreat. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> for your church because it's very it's very unique, and like you were talking about the the demographics of the church, even goes into the music ministry because Leon Temple is there. Th this is not normal. No, it's not. I mean, it's an anomaly to have so many qualified, uh, talented people in the room together without it being about their record. Yes, or some industry album. You know, like this wasn't funded by a label. This was literally the inspiration uh of pastor albert tate mm -hmm. and myself to say hey man there's a sound that can come out of this organization we just got to get in a room so we went to temecula to wine country mm -hmm. and we said lord let the new wine flow yes mm -hmm. and we took a bunch of people and we sat around the table and you know i just have these little exercises that i like to do with with writers some of them are timed exercises because i don't know some some creators you know when you have a bunch of creators in the room the inspirations are different. So some people in, are, are inspired by just sitting and looking at nature and, and taking in the sights and let me just sit and, and breathe and relax. And, you know, some people are inspired that way. Other people need to be around other people. The energy of that mm -hmm. inspires them, you know, just, oh man, us working out together. And then some folks need a time limit because most people can't produce their best thing until they know that clock is ticking. Mm -hmm. Pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And so I would do different exercises that would enforce that in those people. So, yeah, we, we got together and wrote a bunch of songs. I think we wrote 13 songs in a day and a half. Wow. Yeah. So it's amazing. We had a good time. Is it going to be a and project? I also... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Is that going to be a project? Yes. We're releasing an EP in 2021 that will feature some of those songs. We're going to do something familiar and some new. In my experience, I think I've been 
in the industry over almost 30 years now. Started out with TMS way back in the day when I was 18 years old. TMS? Yeah, I don't know if y'all know, I, I started that choir. Adoration and Praise, too, with my girl Dodie. We talked about Absolutely. you yesterday. That's one of the oh, best. That's yeah. one of the best albums in history for those four young ladies: mm -hmm. Demita Hatton Hell and her yeah. twin, Pam and Dodie. Yeah. yeah, Pam, Pam, Dodie, Demita, Margarita. In fact, they both. They have a single coming out called "Power" that we're going to have soon. But I'm oh doing Dodie next week for an interview. Well, tell Dodie I love her, man. I um, yeah, I met those young ladies on TM Records. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we were. I worked with them. I worked with Dietrich. Uh, Haddon and Gerald Haddon, because uh, we had a group that I was a part of called Peace, Perfect Peace, out of Detroit. So I was part of that group. Like, I was just everywhere all the time. Because of the PAW, we all just, like, hung out together. We yeah. just created things. And that label was PAW, right? Was that TM or whatever? Yep, Truth Ministries was started by uh, by a family that was almost like family to me. We, me and the creator of TM, before they be joined PAW, they were part of our little organization, Glorious Apostolic Church. So that's and what so, we know you from, because I remember the face. Yeah, I was skinnier and had a high top. And yes, I was key the yes and there's <laughs> pictures of you on the projects and stuff. Yep, yep. TM Mass, Indiana State Mass. Yes, Indiana Adoration State Mass. Uh, <laughs> I was on all those That was you. I'm just <laughs> clowning when he said Demita and Margarita. I'm like, did he just say Demita and Margarita? They're, they're, they look like, like identical <laughs> twins. That's their name. And, and the second and one can sing just as good as Demita. I, I'm just like saying, my Jesus, my people. What's I your name? The Mita Margarita. I remember your face. I never put that as being you because that choir was really, really amazing. Thank you, man. We started at a youth camp. So we had a church camp and uh, they were like Aaron and uh, Aaron and Charles Laster and a couple other people. We put a choir together. Wow. And so I just, anybody could sing and then we would put them together and we all came from all these churches that and they were parts of choirs and other churches right and we just put put songs together and then my friend keith phelps who is a musical genius that nobody most people don't know him but he's the he is the architect of indiana state mass choir architect Ooh. of tm that y'all know i built it but then he came in and just put put this framework around it so um yeah i've been in this game for a while and wow. i would say the 30 years of experience has taught me going back to the writers thing that uh Songs have a birth date, and you may want to put it out, but the world ain't ready for it yet, which mm -hmm. is why you're just now discovering the songs on Brian's album that right. we did together, because it, it, they have a time that they're supposed to be released. And um, one of the things I don't want to do with Fellowship is force out new content only, because you you know, as a, a in radio, if, if you're familiar with a song, mm -hmm. I can get to learn the artist if I already like the song. The ear, but if if I gotta learn the artist and the song at the same time, mm -hmm. I may not I may not get there unless it's an incredible song. So we're gonna blend some familiar songs that people know with our new content, and then ultimately switch it over to us just pump it out covers, covers, okay. covers, cover sales. So so I'm gonna say this, man. Um, I need about two more hours with you to do this documentary series on your life. Uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll talk about that offline. Uh, because uh, we just don't have enough time to cover the whole history today. But um, I do want you to talk about this new song that we have, this new Christmas song yes. that's going to be a part of the fabric of our music. Um, and then um, i love to tap back into you uh, to do a more in-depth interview with you. Uh, we have a yeah. couple of TV shows. I want on my TV show. Yeah. I want you on my TV show. I'm there. I'm there. Y'all yeah. let me know. Let me tell you, um, I started a label called Multi-Ethnic Records. And um, I'm one of the artists. I'm the first artist on the label. That's why I put my song first. That's great. Um, I realized that we were going to be in a context where we couldn't really gather the way we want to and the way we used to. And in many ways, while we are joyful and triumphant, this is some of the saddest times that we've ever experienced in life. And I've written a song called Take Care that I released at the beginning of the pandemic, which was about taking care of your mind. It's about a soul care. And it blessed a lot of people. And I just felt like I needed to come behind that and say, sometimes soul care is not just sad or quiet. Sometimes soul care is a party. Mm -hmm. And since we can't go to no party, I'm going to bring the party to you. So own. what you hear in this song is joy. It's fun. It's, yeah, I'm stuck in my house, but I can see you on FaceTime. We can connect. We can communicate. And it's called Christmas Time is Here Again, the first song released on that on my own label that I own. Yes. Black owned, smart yeah, man, label. smart man, yeah. <laughs> multi ethnic records. This is the first song 
that I released on the label. And this is where we have it right here. Well, before we do that, how can they get in touch with you, right? Yes. www.multiethnicrecords.com. That's multiethnicrecords.com. And just hit the contact there. You can follow me on Instagram. That's probably where I display most of my life is mm -hmm. on IG. Mm -hmm. And it's Aaron W. Lindsay is my name. Uh, or you can follow me on Twitter. Same name. Or you can go to iTunes and download my record. There you go. Same name. Send us the MP3 <laughs> of Take Care because Tanya told me to mention that song and I didn't. Oh, I got you. I'll send it right after we finish. Got you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the incomparable, the exciting, the anointed man of God, the maestro himself. This is Aaron Lindsay. The song is called Christmas Time. Is here again right here on GODRadio1.com. Six times Grammy.